Hello there. The hybrid workplace is set to replace the traditional office model in the post-pandemic world. This means that team members will need to learn how to communicate differently now that everyone's not always in the same place at the same time. In this video, I explore the basic principles of a human-centric workplace, how it is different from the traditional office setup, and how you can adopt these principles in your small business to help teams communicate no matter where they work. I'll be right back. Welcome back. My name is Raymond Huan, and if you own a business, you're interested in business, or you wish to learn more about the tips and tricks on how to operate a business better, I encourage you to click on the subscribe button that you see before you right now. The difference in the current office setup goes beyond its logistics. It's a different mindset altogether. And what mattered in the traditional office-centric workplace was a warm seat on an employee's physical presence. That's because the traditional workplace places a premium on spontaneous meetings, structured hours of operation, and the visibility of employee activity, all of which require employees to be present in-house. On the other hand, the hybrid workplace does away with spontaneous meetings, structured hours, or employee visibility. Instead, hybrid workplaces follow the tenets of the human-centric workplace design. And in these environments, performance is measured by outcome instead of employee visibility. Intentional collaboration is expected to be normal instead of spontaneous meetings, which tend to be disruptive. Flexible experiences are encouraged over structured hours because human-centric workplaces acknowledge that there is life outside work and that people work differently. In hybrid workplaces, employees are allowed and even encouraged to schedule their workday as long as they can fulfill their responsibilities and deliver the results. Transitioning from a traditional workplace to a hybrid workplace will require many changes, mainly how you communicate with each other. However, as it is tempting to turn to digital tools and communication apps to solve this issue, it is important to first understand and frame the problem. It's not enough to set up digital project management tools or communication platforms such as Zoom or Slack. This transition requires more than just a change in logistics. It requires a shift in the mindset. We need to focus on the right things so that we can set up a human-centric workplace that fully supports better communication. You need to set the tone by defining communication expectations. Identify which scenarios will be required in-person meetings with all hands on deck, and identify which scenarios will require synchronous or immediate communications. And then train everyone to learn how to communicate asynchronously, which should then be the communication norm for daily information exchange. Be intentional on how you teach your team how to communicate. Set the example, show them by example, how asynchronous communication will look like, how teams are expected to respond to queries, raise issues, or collaborate asynchronously, and which channels or platforms asynchronous communication will take place. It will take some time for most team members to get used to the new communication methodologies. However, so long as issues and work are being addressed promptly, there is no reason to expect team members to reply to you immediately. Human-centric workplaces acknowledge that people will work differently. Some people are comfortable and productive when working away from the office or during hours outside traditional office hours. Yet, there are still employees who feel comfortable and productive when working in an office environment. There is no problem at all with where or when or how employees choose to work. It becomes a problem when an organization falls back into the mindset that a warm seat in-house is an indicator of productivity and drive. The in-house employee bias affects the morale of the entire organization because it affects promotions and advancement opportunity decisions for all employees. CVS, a US-based retail pharmacy chain, decided to overcome this bias by amplifying remote worker voices. What this means is that CVS instituted changes in meeting practices by intentionally engaging remote workers at the top of the meeting. They are prioritized in that they are asked to provide status updates, share ideas and feedback before giving the floor to in-office staff. (music) 
How we communicate depends on context. In the absence of non-verbal cues and the advantage of face-to-face -face meetings in the office, remote communication seems a little bit more challenging, but it doesn't mean that it's impossible. As a leader, it just means you need to be more intentional about how you communicate with your team members. Checking in through Slack or any business messaging platform can work wonders in developing rapport and engaging someone. Having a weekly chat, even for just 15 minutes, may work for some employees to nurture relationships between and amongst team members. But we should also consider that people's communication styles and preferences vary. The goal is to find a rhythm for leaders to engage their team members to nurture trust and a good working relationship. The hybrid workplace is here to stay. Leaders have the capacity to make the hybrid environment work for their team. And the key is in learning how to communicate with everyone. My name is Raymond Huan and thank you for watching this video and I hope to catch up with you in another video very soon.